I'm Larry Menti. Welcome back to Jersey Matters. Politics seems to be dominating the national conversation and the conversation in New Jersey, especially since Chris Christie is running for president and has a little bump in the polls recently. Uh, following all of that is this gentleman, Ben Dworkin, who is the director of the Rebovich Institute for New Jersey Politics at Ryder University. Excuse me, I should say doctor. You just got your PhD. I did, so thank you. Congratulations <laughs> It's on good that. to be back here. Yeah, you told me it was important to say that just because your mom is <laughs> might be watching yeah, and she absolutely. and she's so proud of you. Uh, I want to talk about the politics in a moment, sure. but I, I actually want to start by talking about the Institute. Uh, what is it and what's its mission? The Institute was started in 2001 by my predecessor, the late Dr. David Rebovich, who was a professor for many years at Ryder University and was effectively the first uh, nonpartisan person to come out and to give commentary and explain what's happening in New Jersey politics. We have two central missions. One is to raise the level of political discourse uh, in New Jersey, and the second is to train the next generation of political leadership. And we do this in a couple ways. We raise the level of political discourse by having a number of different open meetings, open programs for people to come and meet the people who lead the state. Example, we have had, there are nine living current or former governors in New Jersey. We've had all of them in the last five, six years come to Ryder. We've had every major candidate who's running or conceivably hasn't announced yet, but probably is running for governor come through uh, Ryder. This is an opportunity for students to get up close and personal, to see them, to, for the public to meet them, to get a, an opportunity where they might not, unless they were actively involved in a political organization, they might not get a chance. So, so let me, to back up to that part of the mission, mm -hmm. um, Raising the, what did you call it, the dialogue? Raising the level of political discourse. The raising the level of political discourse in New Jersey, mm -hmm. which is no easy task, raising the level of political discourse. Um, and so uh, you, just by having them there, that, that, that doesn't necessarily raise the level. But so what you're saying, and I'm, I'm, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, you correct me if I'm wrong, it, it makes certain that the discourse is unfiltered. Not only is it unfiltered because people get to meet and to ask their questions directly, but our sense and my belief is that if everybody's a little bit smarter, the conversation is elevated. There's so many different elements to it. I often joke, I teach New Jersey politics uh, at Ryder University, and one of the things I often say is that I wish every reporter would take my class because everybody would be that much smarter. You seem to be taking a little bit of a shot at the media here, that the discourse isn't, the discourse has not been raised on television and in the media. Look, one of, the, one of the problems with uh, New Jersey, one of the challenges, I won't say a problem, a challenge for New Jersey is that your show and others like this aren't, we want, you, we want more people to be watching your show and learning about this stuff. And we try to contribute to that by having these open forums, by having debate, hosting debates, having different uh, programs and, and conferences, by having everybody smarter about the issues, understanding what the, why the, if these things were easy, they'd be done. Is your concern that the discourse has become more about the horse race, more about the fights than about the issues? In part, it's that, but I think it's also when people want to have a debate, if you're sitting around your Thanksgiving table or your holiday table uh, dinner and talking about the issues in New Jersey, not everybody knows enough to contribute to that uh, conversation. But part of that is the way it's covered. Part of that are the debates. The Republicans, I remember at the second debate, no, I guess it was the third debate, when CNBC were upset because many of the questions, and they were correct if you watch the debate, were he said this about you, what do you have to say to him? It almost, it almost evolved to grade school. I, I agree, and on a national level, I mean, those were choices that are made by those moderators. But think about when we have debates, when we here in New Jersey, so few people, when we're talking about a community of eight and a half million or more people living in New Jersey, so few people actually watch these debates. And the decisions that our politicians, though they get teased a, a lot, the people that our politicians in Trenton uh, make have dramatic effects on everybody. Uh, I often tell my students, I don't care what your major is, politics is going to intrude on your life at some point, and so you need to understand how it works, what the issues are, so that you can be a leader wherever you are. Okay, this has been fascinating, and because of that, we're running out of time, but I, I have to get a Chris Christie question Absolutely. in very quickly. He has a little bump in the polls, mm -hmm. well, actually a major 
record bump considering where he was in the polls in New Hampshire. Went up to third place in a recent poll. Do you see that as momentum that can continue at this point? It could. Look, what is the way to think of this crowded presidential field on the Republican side is like a large jazz ensemble. Everybody is going to get a moment to have their solo. Saxophones get up, trombones now, trumpets. And that's where you've seen Walker, Fiorina, uh, ben Carson, all these people have had their moment. Chris Christie has not had his solo yet until now. This is the moment in a 24-7 media culture, people are looking for a new story. They're tired of covering Jeb Bush. This is the moment, and it's, we'll see how long he can keep it. Moments don't always last, but he's only got a few more weeks before uh, New Hampshire votes, and so I think he's on his way. I think Jeb Bush would argue with you that he hasn't had his moment. Trump's been stealing everybody's Trump, in, in the jazz ensemble a metaphor, Trump is the drummer. He sets the beat for everybody else. Thank you. Come Thanks back so again. Much. It's wonderful to talk to you. Ben Dwork director of the Rebovich Institute. Oh, I'm sorry. Dr. Ben Dworkin, <laughs> director of the Rebovich Institute for New Jersey Politics at Ryder University. When we come back, preserving World War I history and preserving New Jersey history, we'll talk about the rehabilitation of an important statue when Jersey Matters continues.